What's going on, everybody? So let's take a look at Tesla. So Tesla had a horrible day. Um, earnings came out, and the earnings were actually really, really good, in my opinion. Um, but yesterday, they, you know, they kind of ran the stock up on those earnings, initial sell-off, and then they did recover some of that. And then in the after hour section uh, a session, we did push up higher a little bit, dropping in this morning's pre-market. Um, and then we kind of put in these highs here. So what you can see on my screen, this is the five minute time frame. I have it zoomed in on a very, very small time frame. So we can kind of get, you know, the, the inside little micro picture here. Um, I have all of the macro levels on Tesla that we really need to, you know, kind of maneuver around. And some of these levels here, we're going to start off with, Today's pre-market highs, 949.46, all the way down to the lows of 820. Guys, if you did take this pre-market rejection here, you can see here in the pre-market session, uh, in after hour session, really going back to yesterday, where we kind of made this, you know, little bounce attempt here and then got kind of got rejected, traded around sideways here in the after hours of pre-market session. It was really in the pre-market session today, this morning, that we really started to ramp up here. So what we were kind of looking at, if you were long biased on Tesla, is to kind of take out these pre-market highs and understand that we had room to run probably the 964 that was giving us a little bit of trouble previously, and then over 964 back into 987. With that being said, we never got above those pre-market highs, and it pretty much presented an amazing short opportunity literally all day. Uh, if we look here, 6.30 a.m., right market opens at 6 30 a.m and where's my where's my 6 30 a.m candle at what am i looking at here 6 30 yeah this this candle here you can see that as soon as we opened we had just a nasty red bar candle kind of closed here you could have essentially put on a short position um right just from the word go uh, and literally held this all day until the last minute of the session and, you know, profited on a hundred point move to the downside on Tesla. But, you know, nobody's perfect. You know, we, of course, we didn't, you know, think that it was going to sell off a hundred points. At least I didn't think that it was going to sell off hundred points. Um, I kind of knew that this, you know, 880 area typically in the past generally holds with Tesla was expecting some sort of a bounce here. You can see when we did lose that 879, 880 area, we did try to make a, a little bit of a recovery here. All we did was create a little bit of a bear flag here. When, once this flag broke, this presented another opportunity and pretty much just algo selling all the way down here, just people uh, unloading these shares on Tesla. So where does that put us going into tomorrow? So going into tomorrow, which is gonna be the, the 28th of January, if Tesla does start to lose this 820, it is going to have more room to the downside. If we kind of look as to, you know, potentially where where could we fall to if we lose uh, that 820? And I think that that next area of support is going to be down here at 781. So I'm going to put just kind of just this little trend line down here. You can see uh, going back to April, we kind of acted as resistance one time. Uh, here in September, it acted as resistance another time. And then it's like really you know, September, end of September, when we broke above it is when we had that massive run into that 1243. So potentially if Tesla does lose $820 tomorrow, there could be more continued selling. You can see that trend line down here. That would be the next leg down that we would look to be uh, trade on Tesla. Okay. So let me just kind of zoom this in so we can see these levels a little bit better here. Yeah, that looks okay. Maybe a little bigger. Okay. So 82079, what we would essentially be looking for is to lose this zone, have maybe a little bit of a bounce, come up to this area, consolidate on the five minute time frame or one minute time frame, two minute time frame, uh, get rejected at this zone and then to flush below these lows. And I think that's a perfect opportunity to take a short position there. What we're looking at to the long side, let's say maybe we get some sort of little relief dead cat bounce, gonna probably need some help from the overall markets, but we're gonna really need to get back over this 850 zone. 850 zone is gonna take us to 868, and then from 868 to 879, I don't really see a macro trade unless maybe you bought the bottom today. So let's say you bought the bottom going into the close. 
Um, what you would be looking for is a break into 868, 880. Um, and then maybe you can cover your position there just due to that. If we do start to chop around this area and lose it, we could come back down. However, if you're looking for a position currently to maybe start a trade, a potential day trade on Tesla, what you want to do is see us break this 879 and 880. That's going to be your biggest opportunity to actually have uh, room to make some money on this stock. I think that, you know, between 850 and 868 could be a little bit choppy could be a little bit choppy. 868 to 879 could be a little bit choppy. It could do a lot of this, fake you out a little bit. So what we kind of want to see is we want to see Tesla come into this 880 and break, hold, and then start pushing up back towards 900. But again, that would be a 70 point move intraday on Tesla. Not saying that Tesla can't do something phenomenal, but it is a bit of a stretch, something probably more realistic, maybe break the 850, come into the 868, 870, before it starts to get weak and then come back down if they are gonna sell it. Uh, 820 to the downside is definitely going to be the biggest level that you wanna be looking at. But with the way that the market is trading right now, um, pretty much all week we've been in a sideways, sideways up and down chop fest. So um, your bounces are really not holding to the long side, you're getting washed out. And then when you do get washed out, you go short, it quickly bounces on you. It's tough, tough, tough. And to tell people right now to, you know, this is the dip, uh, you know, to buy it, and this could be the potential uh, bottom would be crazy. So if anyone out there is telling you that now is the time to, to start buying this dip, uh, you know, I would kind of steer away from those people, just like I'm not gonna tell you that, um, you know, that we're going lower. I don't know. I don't think anyone out there really knows what this market wants to do right now. We're just going to kind of have to, you know, be extremely, extremely patient. If we do decide to take some day trades or scalps or, you know, any type of trade intraday, uh, we really need to know the levels where uh, stocks are going to potentially stop, where potentially are they going to hold. So, you know, for me right now, as long as Tesla is holding 820, I'm, I'm confident playing that into the zones going higher. So as long as we're holding this bottom trend line here of 820 and we do get in to 849, I'm comfortable holding. Um, I'm comfortable holding in consolidation here. I'd be comfortable holding into here. But obviously, if we do come back down and we lose 820, all bets are off. Uh, we have to exit those positions just due to the fact that you don't want to be a part of Tesla starting another leg down. Okay. Just like as if you're shorting um, and we really start to reclaim 880 and start making a push up towards 900, you really don't want to be holding these positions as it's breaking these zones. So maybe 849, you can think about covering your short. 868 area, you can think about covering your short. 880, you can think about covering your short. Um, you know, you definitely don't want to be on the wrong side of a Tesla play just due to the fact that if you trade Tesla, you know how how much this thing can move and how how crazy this stock can whipsaw but it can also be a very very fantastic trader just due to the fact that the ranges that it gives you you don't need to catch the 100 point move on tesla you don't need to catch the 30 point move on tesla you can catch tesla between 850 and 868 and make a fantastic living you can catch the short from 820 to 810 and make a fantastic living um you can potentially get into this play and as long as we hold this whole zone here from 820 to 850 and potentially swing this, as long as we're holding this zone, have confidence to hold uh, your play here and kind of take profits accordingly. Remember, take profits accordingly. Um, just like as if you want to short, as long as we're staying in this zone and we don't break back above and hold 850, you can hold this short position in anticipation for this next leg down. So right now, we really need to be nimble, meaning that, yes, we are in an 18% correction on the triple Qs. We know that. We know that there's potential for the stocks to go lower. We know that. But we also know that there is a potential that these stocks bounce and they never see lows again. So if that happens, you're going to want to know those zones to the long side so you can take advantage of it and not miss that move. So for me, as long as Tesla is holding 820 to 850, 
I'm comfortable in this play going long. Now, obviously, if I if I'm looking for a day trade or a scalp, I'm not gonna you know give myself 30 points worth of risk here on this play. But I know that if I can break 850, maybe back test that and then make this push higher, I'll be comfortable taking a, a long position here and selling into 868 and then reevaluating the trade. Um, and I know also that if we do come up to 850, let's say tomorrow, we come up into this 850 zone in between 850 and 860, and then we lose this zone, I'm comfortable shorting below 850 back into 820. I hope that kind of makes sense. It seems complicated. It seems like you're going to need to be on your P's and Q's and really watch these stocks. And that's just the way that it is. Because if we do continue to do this kind of high volatility trading sideways, big up and down ranges, you can't just afford to put on a position here and think that it's coming all the way back up. It's just, it, you know, it maybe it can, but it's just not that type of environment. Just like I can't feel comfortable shorting here um, having the stock go against me and saying that it's going to put in another leg down because I think that the market is going lower. That would just be stupid of me. Um, you know, if you can't handle that type of trading, then right now maybe is the time where you don't want to be buying anything. You don't want to be trading. You want to see, are we going to break bear? Are we going to break bull? And then maybe at that time you can start to play the markets. I think that, you know, maybe one of the safest things that you can do is just start nibbling in at the S&P 500, buying the SPY ETF over the history of, you know, 80, 90, 100 years of the stock market, the, the S&P 500 has consistently gone up. So even if this is not the bottom floor, at least you're nibbled in here and you can kind of average down on your dollar cost average down on your position. And then when maybe the market does start to turn around, maybe the end of this year or 2023, you are already set up in a very, very prime position to make a lot of money because you were buying these dips. Now, I'm not gonna buy every single dip. So like when Tesla dipped from 900 to 870, I'm not gonna buy the dip here and buy the dip here and buy the dip here. That's just a never ending cycle. You want kind of bigger macro moves, but like if you look at something like the S&P 500, for example, we're down trading around the 200 day moving average. I'm comfortable loading uh, the S&P 100 at the 200 day moving average. If we do drop below that, I'll wait for the next big leg down and kind of average into my position there. That's the only other way. That's a long-term play, but I think it's the safest play if you can't handle these ups and downs because what can happen in a market like this, you can just take a paper cut after paper cut after paper cut after paper cut. Next thing you know, you've been doing the same cycle, winning a little bit, losing more, winning a little bit, losing more, losing a little bit, winning nothing, losing a little bit, Maybe you have a green day and then you give it all back. You can go through a cycle where two to three months later down the road, you've completely drained your portfolio, chasing all of these small pops and all of these, you know, all of these dips, buying every dip and trying to buy every dip and trying to short every pop is going to get you killed. You kind of need to just sit back, wait for the bigger macro trade. The big macro trade on a stock like Tesla is going to be, we're going to need to pull up this daily chart. Okay. If we're going to bounce, I think that Tesla does need to, it does need to get a, a nice consolidation over this $820 and it needs to bounce. If Tesla doesn't hold 820, we're coming down to 780. The big macro trade on Tesla is really not until we get over $1,000. So by you uh, averaging a position down in here, yes, maybe you're gonna come out a winner, but this road could last one month it could last six months. It could last 12 months. We don't know that yet. You could be in this chop cycle for six months, 12 months, and, and experiencing a lot of pain and a lot of stress. You know, we, until we really break back over a thousand, confirm this price and start to move higher, um, you know, you're, you're just going to be in this chop cycle. So you can come into this range, come into this range, and then Tesla can completely put in another leg down. So this is more buying the dip if you have a high risk appetite. If you have a high risk appetite, you do have some dry powder, you've got some capital that you know you really do not mind losing or dollar cost averaging down if we do lose 820, then yes, maybe you can get in on this little ride here and sell the pop and then wait for the dip 
and then get in again and kind of sell the pops. You can play it that way, or you can try to get in here. And as long as we hold this 820 zone, um, you know, kind of take, let Tesla take its time to kind of work its way back up. But just understand that if we do lose 820, okay, if we do lose 820, 780 is going to be the next pit stop. So you're also going to have to keep that in mind as that is around 40 points down. So if you're not comfortable being down in a drawdown on Tesla and averaging into this $780 mark, then don't take this play. You're going to kind of want to wait for Tesla to either macro break over a thousand or macro break down below 820 and play the short side into 780. I hope that kind of gives a little bit of clarity and a little bit of perspective. Right now, I do think that it's more of a trader's market. And I think that it's more of, you need to take profits quick. Um, you know, just because something is green this hour does not mean that the next hour, it's not gonna lose it. So if you do get into a day trade, and you do win a little bit of money and the move and the move is going into your favor just do yourself a favor and lock in those profits there's nothing wrong with taking a thousand dollar win you know and missing out on a potential five thousand there's nothing wrong with winning a hundred dollars you know taking a trade and making a hundred dollars on that trade and being profitable on the day there's nothing wrong with making money at the end of the day would you rather, and you can sit back, and I don't care if you have a $100,000 account, and you tell me, man, $100 is not shit. I get it. I get it. What can you buy really with $100 with, you know, where we're at today? You know, maybe you, maybe you can buy dinner and, 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 and put half a tank of uh, gas in your car, right? I get it. But would you rather make $100 or be down two, three, four thousand $4,000? Think about it that way. Would you rather be able to take $200 out of the market two or three times a week while we're in this kind of cycle that we're in? Or would you rather hold on to a play that's down 10,000? I want you to think about that. Um, guys, if you like this video, please do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. I'm working very, very hard doing a lot of technical analysis, trying to give us the best levels that we can make some money on. Obviously, none of us know where the market is going. I don't know if it's going up, down, sideways. I don't know how long this will last. I don't think anyone can really predict that. I think if anyone out there on social media is predicting this to bottom, I think you know, you're know, you stupid for listening to them. And I think that if anyone is saying that the market is going you know, down another 20%, then I think you're also stupid to, for listening uh, to them. Because right now, nobody knows what the market is doing. There's so much uncertainty in the market. All we can do is kind of protect the capital that we do have and kind of make uh, you know, some small cash flow trades until we get out of this cycle that we're in. Uh, we could very well be going into um, a bear market where you know, the indexes are below 20%. Um, you know, if you don't think that stocks can go down lower, just go back and look at 2007 and 2008 charts. Just go back and look at 1999, 2000, 2001 charts during the dot-com bubble. Um, you know, and the, the dot-com bubble lasted almost a year, two years. Uh, the mortgage financial crisis lasted about two years. You know, so in those type of markets, people, you know, there's some people that are not making a dime. You know, you're not making a dime for two years. You're chopping yourself up. You're bleeding your account. Uh, the best thing that we can really do is just kind of manage our, our money uh, the best that we can and try to play the markets on a day-to-day -day basis until the market shows us, hey, yes, we are going to be in a bear market um, and or we're going to recover and we're actually going to start making a comeback on stocks. But my personal opinion is I think that it'll probably be if we do make a recovery in 2022, will not be until after the summertime. So potentially we do have room to drop lower. We do have room to trade sideways for another two, three, four months. Um, of this kind of same type of price action where you're seeing, you know, bounces uh, come up intraday and then, you know, they kind of give them all back the next day and then we trade sideways the third day and then we kind of come back down and then maybe we, we gain it all back. I can kind of see that cycle going on, not saying that you can't make money as a trader in that type of environment, but it's going to be a lot harder. What we really would like to see in whether you're a perma bull or you're a perma bear, the best thing that you would want to see in a market like this is to either be in a trending bear market or a trending bull market. The last thing we want to do 
is be in a bull versus bear fight each and every day that can string out and last six, eight, 12 months. That's the last thing you want to do. We want someone to kind of take control to where we know, hey, I'm comfortable shorting uh, these green days because we are in a bear market, uh, or I'm comfortable buying these green days because I know the bulls are going to come and rally that price the next day. Guys, I hope this video helped, and I will see you guys all on the next one.